what a defensive effort by both teams. Um, you know, I, I, I truly respect Krista and what she's done. She's turned around that program quickly. And I've said this from the beginning. I said this to my staff, at least anyway. Um, to me, they've been one of the top three to four teams in our conference, especially when they're playing really well. I think they're going to be a, a really, really tough team next year. For sure, they're going to get my vote. Um, I think they're returning a lot. Obviously, they have a great freshman, but I think they're buying into what she's doing. So for me, this win is huge. It's very difficult to beat a, t a team you know, three times in one season, especially one that we've played so close all the time. I think the one thing that might make a difference for our student athletes is that it's a familiar foe for us, though, because you know, we've kind of traveled together. Um, we traveled together from the Southland Conference, then we both were in the WAC, and then now we both have been in the Sun Belt together. So I think there's a familiarity there for both teams, though. Um, both teams uh, have seen each other quite a bit. Uh, and I think that there's a respect level there. And so when that happens, it's really who's going to lay it out on the line. And I saw a lot of that from both teams. You know, uh, Megan Breyer did a great job down the stretch for us finishing those free throws because the defensive efforts from both teams were really good. Um, I'm especially proud of the effort by Clea May and um, Erica May getting some huge defensive stops with those rebounds that they got and then being smart enough to, you know, get the ball up the floor to, to our guards that can shoot free throws. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, we have student athletes from Texas State. Number one, Ariel Anderson. Number 15, Erica May. If you'd like to ask a question, please wait for the microphone and identify yourself by your name and your media outlet. Questions for the student athletes first? Joe Vizzelli, San Marcos Daily Record. Erica, the block that you had there with about 37 seconds left seemed to kind of seal the game for you guys. Did you, did you see that as a big play in, in, in the scheme of being able to win this game tonight or today? Yes, of course. I, I saw it as a big play because cause if she would have made that, it would have changed the game situation. So me blocking it really helped us get our momentum to finish off the game and get the W. Continue if you have further questions. And Ariel, how, how nice was it to, to have the great defensive effort that you had? I mean, you've held them, this team under 60 points in all three games this year. It seems like defense has been the kind of the story of the season against this team specifically. Um, yes, we know that um, they have number 44 who can uh, really bang in the inside. And the defensive presence of Kalia Mays really helped us guards just feel great about not letting them get, get it in to the big girl to also help Kalia. And I just feel like our defensive pressure has uh, kicked in towards the end of the season. Further questions for the student athletes? Okay, then we're all set with the student athletes. If you'd like to make it back to the locker room, I believe we have someone back there who can take a bag. Jared at the back will take you to the locker room. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'll open to questions for head coach Zenere Antoine. Do I need to? Just say that you can just ask the question. Um, coach, you know, we, you talked about, I think, before how tough it was going to be to be able to beat a team three times. Mm -hmm. What was the difference tonight? I mean, it seemed like defense was the story of the game. I think it first started with the fact that the kids believed they could do it. And I think it first started with the fact that this entire time they, as well as my staff, said, I've got a good feeling. And as a head coach, regardless of where you are with the game, anytime your team is saying that um, and it resonates um, with inside you, that they have some feeling that they can get this done. And a big part of being able to survive in any competition is, you know, it's all up here. It's a mental piece. So for me, that's really where it stood. And our one Achilles heel for this entire season with our inconsistency has been our lack of consistent defensive effort. And so the fact of the matter is we did a great job being more consistent with our defensive effort. And I, I'll be honest, we didn't have a great shooting night um, to, to me. But of course, you're on a neutral floor, so you never kind of know. So defense is going to be what's going to continue for us. I think the other piece for us, it's nice that we were here last year as well. So that makes it familiar for the student athlete. They have a good understanding of what it's going to take to survive. So I think the momentum for me um, right now with our team is, is truly in our favor, meaning that we've been here before we've done this. Last year, we weren't able to get past Arkansas State, who was the number one seed. Um, I think they were at the time. Um, I can't remember if it's them or Western. But regardless, they're one of the top two teams in the conference. Um, they won the regular season. And now, again, we're going up against another team who's won the regular season, who swept us um, this year. I think they understand that. And I also think they understand that we can. This is a team that we can beat. We just haven't had the opportunity. So now that the opportunity presents itself, we'll prepare them. But as long as they bring great effort, I think you're going to find it'll be a close game. And though you didn't have a good shooting in other areas, really three-pointers seem to be the difference. I mean, I think you go six of 12 on three-pointers. 
you know, that was really the best part of your game, I would say, uh, scoring-wise at least. Do you think that yeah. made a difference? It definitely stretches out the game. I think I think most people understand that, especially low-scoring games. If you do a pretty good job from the three-point line, it makes it more difficult for people. Um, I think our kids understood the first two contests against them. When we worked the ball, we got ourselves to good shots, whether it be a three or wide-open layups, being able to dribble penetrate. Um, I think that's what we found again. With the majority of those threes, of the majority of the threes that we took, probably only two or three were bad threes, where there were rush threes or time and score situation. The rest of them were rhythm shots, and I was really appreciative of the fact that these kids cl clearly understood that was part of our first game plan, and we were able to execute it. And finally, you know, the last couple of games, you've watched teams cut the lead down, and, and you know, I think you had it at 10 points three times, and they were able to cut it down, but they weren't able to retake the lead. Do you think? The past games kind of showed your team what needs to happen in those situations to be able to win a game. I think it's a it's twofold for us, Joe. I think one is the, the fact that we run a lot of time and score situations within practice, so we put our kids in stressful situations. Um, then towards the end of the year, we started doing it. We made it even more fun where we'd, we'd have a situation and we just toss a coin up and we'd flip for it between them and the scout team. So that opportunity to put themselves in situations they chose to or not. And then of course, um, good or bad, the fact is that we've been in these situations quite a bit, so we understand how to push ahead and that we're okay. And geez, losing Ariel Anderson. There, you know, to me that still was early. I can't say that that I that I wasn't slightly nervous, but putting Eric Command with a defensive effort with the way the game was going in gave me a lot of confidence because I've got trust in, in our team from that area, especially with the way the game played out. And so I think that definitely has helped propel them in their mind mentally for sure. How about uh, Erica May, specifically a freshman, being able to play the kind of defense that she played tonight? She's a tremendous defender. You know, when we signed Erica, it was 100% for defense. We recognize that's an area we're deficient, and the kid plays with so much heart and hustle. A lot of times I have to overlook some of the silly freshman mistakes she makes, but she makes up for it in so many other areas, and I really appreciate that. In addition to that, Erica's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. Um, she just hasn't had that opportunity just yet for us. But yeah, it's exciting. You know, sometimes I just don't know what they don't know, and, and that's good enough for me. Any further questions? One over here to the left. Uh, <clears throat> Grant McKinley, UTA Shorthorn. Mm -hmm. Coach, you mentioned the familiarity of playing UTA in, over the past couple of years. What is the difference you've seen from the team this season compared to last couple of years? I think they have a, a, an identity. Um, and it's a defensive identity. I think they're gone the second year now under Krista's um, with her def defensive game plan as far as what she wants, what she's looking for, how to play it. And I think as they continue to recruit, the better athletes they get, both mentally and physically, the better they're going to be defensively. And it's really tough. Um, I think it's really tough because the majority of our conference, for the most part, is pretty defensive-minded. Um, they make it very difficult for you to score. Um, she does a good job of controlling possessions, and now she's just had the opportunity again to you know, bring in her kids in her second year in the system. As she moves forward, uh, I really think they're going to be a, a tough opponent in this conference. Uh, Rebecca had a pretty low scoring first half for UTA. Was it the game plan to keep the ball away from her? The game plan was, was no different than before. We didn't change our game plan regarding Rebecca. Clea Mays did a good job. You know, Rebecca is a very sound player, meaning she doesn't take bad shots. She takes shots on the block, and those are the only shots she truly takes. If she takes a shot out of character, she shot that, that mid-range shot. I was like, oh, I bet Chris didn't like that. Um, you know, that's not her game. She really doesn't play outside of herself. So if we can force her and get her stopped early enough outside the paint, um, get her in a position where she isn't as comfortable scoring, she gives the ball up to someone else, and we'll take our chances with some of those other players against our defense. We have time for one more if we have one. We're good. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, congratulations to Texas State. And um, I thought that they really battled hard. And, and um, you know, I thought they had some veteran players step up and really knock down some big shots and just kind of control it from the tip, really. Um, I can't say how proud – I mean, I, I really can't describe how proud I am of our kids. And just – Obviously for being here, for one, but um, I know they're really disappointed because of the way they think they played. Um, but I thought that they didn't, they didn't give up. They didn't um, lay down at any point. I thought that they kept battling back. And we just had some untimely turnovers. We could, really couldn't get in a rhythm offensively. Um, and credit that to Texas State, absolutely. Um, but, you know, obviously the free throw line is glaring to us, and, and we got to do something about that. But. I, I'm just, I don't want it, this game to take away from the season that these kids have had. Now open it up to questions for the student athletes. And once again, please identify yourself for your first question by your name and media outlet. Questions? Over here on the left. Uh, Greg McKinley, UTA Shorthorn. Sean, can you just kind of explain what kind of thoughts are going through your, your mind right now? I mean, I mean, I'm definitely sad that our season had to end like this and that I had to end my last game like this, but 
I'm just proud of the way that our team fought this whole season. I mean, coming from last year and just turning it around, and I'm very proud of everyone. I look forward to seeing what they bring in the future. Uh, you've seen conference changes and coaching changes. What was the big difference this season compared to previous years? Uh, I mean, just when we first started this uh, summer, we worked. I feel like we worked way harder, so that's a big change, and it actually showed. It showed on the court. So. Additional questions? Again to the left. Cassie Logan, UTA Shorthorn. Um, Sierra, just, I mean, we saw a lot of frustration from uh, ref, uh, the referee's calls. I mean, just talk about how you were able to kind of push through that and overlook, um, overlook their. Um, um, my teammates, they constantly told me that it's okay and to keep pushing. So I got to give it to them because if I didn't have them, I probably would have just quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Further questions? Sierra, for your first experience in a conference tournament, what was this like for you? It, it's crazy. I don't know. I just wanted to win. It's definitely different. I, I was definitely nervous because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. <laughs> Did the, the pressure of knowing that it's a, a one and done kind of affect you at all in the game? Uh, no, not really. It's just. I don't want to lose. <laughs> okay, I think we're good with the student athletes. Uh, you guys can head back to the locker room. Uh, Jared from the back will show you back to the locker room. We'll open it up to questions for the head coach now, Krista Garlick. Coach Garlick, just even after you know this loss, talk about. I mean, how does it feel to have those 17 wins even after last season with only four? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm just I'm really proud of that group. Um, you know, even looking at our stats in this game, um, you know, the, those kids don't think they played very well, but Sierra's one rebound away from a double double, and Rebecca's one point away from a double double, and those are that's our future. Um, so we're really excited about that. I, I really couldn't be more pleased with um, Sean and Cree and how they um, allowed this team to. Um, you know, to gel and to and to buy into what we were selling, and um, and to just know that brighter days are actually ahead of us. And and Sean and Cree might not be actually involved in it um, out on the court with us because obviously they're graduating, but that they've laid the foundation for it. And and that was a big deal for me to be able to have those seniors um, that that do that. I mean, I don't know very many teams that can have two seniors on a team that don't that doesn't start and have great chemistry. And we had great chemistry. Um, I'm just excited about our future, and I'm, so, I mean, I'm really thrilled with 17 wins. I mean, not satisfied, but thrilled, and, um, and we just want to keep building and getting better, and, and now our kids know what it's about. I mean, we just had a, there's not one kid on our team that has any type of playoff experience, so, you know, that's a good taste for them. And what's kind of the biggest change that you've seen from last year's team to this year's to get you to this point? Um, just like kind of like Sean said, the hard work and um, I mean, we have a bunch of new kids. It's a totally new team from last year and um, and they just really came in and, and bought into what we were doing and um, really get after it. They really like each other. Their team chemistry is really incredible for having so many new t new players um, and they just were determined, you know. I thought that they won some ball games this year. They might not should have, and um, and lost some ball games that they shouldn't have lost. But at the same time, I just think that they really, um, I just I just think they really are determined and, and want to win and and want to be the change at UTA. Question over here to the right. Joe Vizzelli, San Marcos Daily Record, Coach. You, you cut it a couple times down to three or four points. What do you think was the difference in ultimately that Texas State being able to win the game tonight? You know, I really do want to credit Ariel and Megan for, for what they did. I mean, they just look like veteran guards out there to me. I thought that they um, hit big shots. I mean, you can't leave Megan open on the free th on the three-point line um, and give her any space. And, I, and we need a player like that. Um, I think she really does a nice job in that, that role that she um, plays in. And then going to the free throw line and knocking it down. I mean, she just really played well, I thought, and played poised and, and confident. Um, and then Ariel gave us fits all night. I think it's really hard to guard her in the open court. And then, of course, off the dribble. I mean, I think she's really good at all that stuff. Um, but I think that when we not, you know, when we cut it to two, um, I think we had three consecutive turnovers, and we just can't do that. And I think they were turnovers for easy buckets, transition buckets. And that just – it's kind of a dagger, especially for a team that hasn't been there before that was really struggling. We were struggling to score all night long. So then when we finally cut it to two and then we give them easy buckets, it's just kind of a – you know, it just kind of takes the air out of you a little bit. Sure. And from not watching your team this year, 
you know, I think it took about 37 minutes for your first three-pointer to go down, and they had five or six at that Absolutely. point. Is that, I mean, has that been a, a strength or a weakness of your team this year? And, and do you think that kind of was one of the major, major differences? I do think that was a big difference as far as us just being able to loosen it up. You know, we're, we're, we're very post-oriented, but we have got to be able to knock down some outside shots to loosen the, the inside up for Rebecca to, to have some more one-on-one -on -one opportunities instead of maybe getting so much backside help. Um, and we haven't shot the ball well from the three-point line very much this year. And, um, and, and we do need to, you know, obviously um, that needs to be a, a point of emphasis moving forward. But even the, the free throw line is probably more um, glaring to me than that because the free throw line is just mental, you know, and I feel like they've got to walk up there and, and knock down shots. And I'm not sure that we even made the front end of a one and one tonight, you know, so it's we missed more than 10 <laughs> in my eyes. And finally, both teams, you know, even Coach Z credited your defense as well. Did you expect this kind of defensive struggle between these two teams today? Um, you know, I really do want to credit Texas State with their defense because I don't think that they've played as well a defense as they have um, as they did tonight. And I thought that they really played hard. I thought they got in some passing lanes and disrupted. I thought, um, forgive me, I can't remember 21's name off the top of my head, um, but I thought she really made it difficult for Rebecca to get some easy looks. And um, and and I thought that they just I, I thought they matched us. You know, I thought when we made some runs, they turned around and made some right back. Question back to the left side, <clears throat> Coach. You mentioned um, your excitement about the future. Mm -hmm. Just what do you see in the future of the program, and what do you need to do to to get to that point? Yeah, well, I think the fact that we finished in the top five is is outstanding, especially with our younger kids being maybe our go-to players. Um, I think that. You know, we're just excited about being able to be in the mix. I think even throughout the season, I can really just count maybe um, the first time we played Little Rock as a game that, that was out of control. You know, the rest of them we were in, right in the middle of them. And, and I think defensively, if we can continue to build on that, it just gives us an opportunity. That's just like the first half of this game. I mean, we didn't feel like we were playing well offensively at all, and credit that to Texas State. But our defense is what kept us in it, because I really feel like it could have gotten out of hand. Um, if we weren't guarding, you know, and so hopefully we'll continue to work on that and continue to get better and, and really thrive and, and make that be our strength. And, and then the offense, we can continue to add players that will maybe enhance our offense a little bit.